Well, folks, I'm here today. I've been up all night, so if I'm a little bit ringy in my conversation, forgive me, but basically what I want to talk about is internal criteria, what I call internal criteria, and internalizing criteria. Now, I, you know, I was having conversations that I had with him be cutting back when we was on the well, having a few drinks uh, on 6th Street, San Francisco. Some people might know what that means. But anyhow, when you get down there on that, on that particular neighborhood, you seem to uh, loosen up with your, uh, you know, you kind of lose your pretense. Because <laughs> when you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. So our conversation was pretty uh, honest and straightforward because we didn't give a shit about too much about people's opinions. Otherwise, we would have been sitting on Sixth Street drinking one night. <laughs> but anyhow, the reason why there's such a high rate of suicide amongst the abstract expressionists is because of this idea of criteria. And never having it established. Now, criteria is not just an external thing. Criteria is a very personal, internalized thing. And if it's not within you, you suffer from this major inferiority complex. Now, most, you know, I can speak a bit for the abstract expressionist. I can say, even though I'm obscure and uh, some of the art snobs don't like me, I'll just tell the truth, pal. One of the hallmarks of us abstract expressionists, former abstract expressionists in my case, our hallmark, you know, and this is, this is what the Cunning told me about I Woman, too, so I know we have this in common, is that we have an extremely large ego coupled by an extremely large inferiority complex, believe it or not. And the reason for this is because of the internalizing criteria. Now, the abstract expressionist weren't as lucky and William Stroh very hard to, uh, to establish criteria. He wasn't trying to pull a con on everyone. He was just bolted so much by these uh, I call them, uh, which polite word, intellectual, uh, manipulators. Okay, this seems good enough. Uh, they manipulate for, uh, you know, manipulate the pocketbook. And, um, uh, most of us are very sincere in our striving for a criteria. I'm going to give you an example of uh, the Kooning's uh, My Woman painting. Now, when he started the painting, you know, at least this is what he told me. I don't know what, he, what everybody else assumed about what he said, but I know from what he said to me on the down and out. And basically, what he was trying to do with I Woman when he started was to paint the perfect woman. Because he had this need for uh, to internalize criteria, and like me, he had to find out what it was. I just was younger, so I lived longer, and I saw the 21st century and finally figured it out. But he didn't. Unfortunately, he was a very good man. Good old good buddy, good good buddy. <laughs> no, I didn't know him that well. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. Right, but one person that has a drinking problem knows another person that has a drinking. Problem. Whether it's Betty Ward or uh, whoever, you know, it's a good equalizer in other words. And uh, basically, what Woody Killing was doing, like I said, was trying to establish criteria and going what we call past the money in common vernacular with the uh, abstract expressionist. 
and or at least not conversation. And going past the money means that uh, once everybody else is saying stop right there, stop right there, it's perfect. We have to experiment a little bit more. And usually as a result, we either wear out the canvas or uh, injure the canvas to the point where it's, uh, you can't fix it. And it looks sloppy as hell and stuff, and that's how that happened. Well, Recruiting did this with our woman because he, you know, I did it myself. Uh, went past the money with a beautiful, you know, looking for a real beautiful aesthetic woman, the most beautiful. So he's going to pick the most beautiful woman in the world. And then uh, he went past the money and he kept going, and I knew exactly how it goes. This obsession, you have to have a drink to get rid of this obsession. When I was younger, I went to that. I didn't have been over it that many years. But uh, this obsession will drive you to drink. And uh, if you get too drunk and start messing with the canvas, some weird stuff can happen. So De Kooning wakes up out of the drunk, sees what he did with the, with the painting, and it's like waking up next to, uh, <laughs> you know, the night before they can see the beauty and the, the night after going on. Oh, well, maybe I'll cut up my arm, but I don't want to wake her up. <laughs> but anyhow, so De Kooning finally gets the nerve to throw it out. And he's going to trash it. And uh, Leo, I think, I can't remember, I think it was Leo uh, starting to munch it. Right? Forgive me, that's my ignorance. Or Stromberg. They're yeah, not Stein, that's stupid. And, uh, or one of them, anyhow. Mm, uh, I don't have to, you know, my memory's not perfect, Jesus. But, anyhow, him and his buddy talked to uh, William out of trash in this, and basically, William said, okay, and the gist of the conversation was, uh, oh, you were striving for uh, an aesthetic woman, and you, uh, you went past the money, and then this is the result of your anger towards women, that she got drunk and, and distorted her so much. There was his anger towards the painting itself, too, and women in general, if you... Just like any man, he wants a perfect woman, and when she isn't perfect, he tries to fix her, and you know how that goes. <laughs> I mean, most of us guys know that one. And anyhow, since this being just our main talk, uh, Leo and his friend, they're real intelligent guys, but they were also in that existential. I call it BS because that's what it is. <laughs> but uh, they, because a lot of people were paying attention to William as he was going through this, trying to paint this I woman. And uh, they wanted to spread the word around what we couldn't have done, and there became a mystique about the I woman. And that's a true uh, explanation. I don't care what the art critics and stuff say. I know what, uh, what William and I uh, know about that particular, you know, the, the archetypal eye woman, the first eye woman. And the rest were just uh, kind of repetitions. And people, you know, everybody looked at the first one's priceless. Not because it has any aesthetic, but because of the striving for the aesthetic. His diligent striving and his frustration. I'm not finding an aesthetic. Okay, well, that's basically what happened, and that's the story of I woman and uh, the suicidal tendency that the abstract expressionists seem to have because of this lack of a of a denotative criteria. And thank God, you know, that because uh, I almost drank myself to death over the same thing. Uh, because. Uh, you don't have the criteria if you're a man of integrity and the intellectuals and stuff around you are selling your goods and people are buying them because it's a mystique. And you start believing it yourself. It's kind of like the preacher syndrome. 
preacher starts asking for money long enough, he's believing he's asking up for God instead of himself. I mean, this is just, uh, this is plain talk. This is our plain talk. It's not the fancy stuff. So, uh, this is how our Sardis would look at it. And, so that's the whole trouble. I mean, uh, Rothko went through the same thing. You know, uh, oh, it's quite, this crisis in criteria and having the, uh, these intellectuals, uh, especially the existentialists, that's a good one, really disgusted with them. Uh, doing this, they weren't true existentialists, some of the existentialists, uh, you know, we believe Nietzsche certainly believed him. You know, he was deeply spiritual. But people that read these guys uh, don't understand, like Hitler did. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get it. He took, he took Nietzsche literally, and, uh, you know, these guys are taking uh, Sartre literally. Well, if you, you know, there's a little secret, but I don't, I don't want to go past my level of expertise, I guess. Oh, homespun expertise, pal. Even though know, I have studied diligently and I'm highly aware. But anyhow, back to the in the island. And that's why Pollock. That was his major beef, too. Uh, when he started his drip period, uh, that was really an expression of, of the post Picasso aesthetic. He said, exhausted. He said, okay, there is no fucking aesthetic. aesthetic. There is just, excuse the word, that's desperate, I'm sorry. Uh, but there is no aesthetic. Uh, uh, there's only expression of self. This is the best I can do. I'm exhausted. There is no criteria. Everything is relative. Uh, uh, it is in an instant despair, and in despair usually ends in suicide. And the reason for this, like I'm trying to explain, but I don't know if I have, is because of internalizing criteria. If you're a man of, inter of integrity, you have to internalize the criteria. And if somebody's buying your your work, your heart's work, uh, you can rationalize to yourself. But if you have an established criteria, you know better, and you always wonder, am I selling these people a bill of goods? And no matter how much money you make, you'll never be happy because uh, you have an internalized criteria. You really don't believe in what you're doing, even though you've struggled so hard to do it. And I know this because I've been through it myself. I'm sure every artist in the 21st century words has also been through this. If they're honest, if they're not con, you know, most real artists, we can't be. We're not the businessman type. It takes the intellectuals and the so-called uh, art critics that really don't understand it. I'm not saying anything about some of the good old boys. I like Robert Hughes, you know, and Thomas Greenberg has good bad points and uh, Leo Stein, you yeah. uh, know. But Okay, that's the reason why the for the high rate of suicide among the Japanese expressionists in plain talk. And thank God that I have established criteria internally in myself, and uh, I don't need to depend on someone else's opinion, some art critic or uh, some uh, supposed connoisseur, because they study long and they study wrong, like an old black man told me. But I study with the light, and I study right. And after 33 years, I can say I'm an authority on the subject. And this is the real McCoy. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to say. Long-winded, ain't I?